The train heist, it was an attempt for us to one-up the classic stagecoach train robbery. We wanted to do our Fast and Furious version of that without horses, <laughs> but a whole lot of horsepower. There is no limits on this. Every Fast and Furious has got to top the last one, and what could top a hijacking of gasoline tanker? Well, let's just hijack a train. Let's cut right through the side of the train and pull cars out of it. The train sequence, the key for us was how much can we do practical opposed to how much was going to end up being green screen or computer generated. Could we bring in the vehicles and the train and actually do it practically? And I think we've executed that to probably 90%. We had to get permission to basically own a piece of railroad, working railroad, and then we had to buy trains, and then we had to you know, build these trucks that were able to go up against the trains. I think the train sequence was our biggest uh, accomplishment because the high trucks were really built from scratch, you know, right there in our shop. A truck showed up from Industrial Meadows with a bunch of steel, and from that, we built a vehicle out of it. Looking at the vehicle itself, we basically designed the suspension very similar to a monster truck with the big four-link bars and the large axles. The reason for this is we need to have tremendous durability and we need to be able to carry a lot of speed over rough terrain. They're coming through the open desert, flying this thing over crevices, over ditches, and everything else you can imagine. And of course, this whole sequence will be shot in Parker, Arizona, in the middle of the summer, so that's going to be fun. You know what? It was um, unbelievably hot. I mean, we saw the temperature gauge we had at base camp that was 120 degrees in the shade. Out in the sun, it was over 130. Yeah, it was very uncomfortable. We ended up taking ice and laying it on the stuff that we were going to be jumping on and letting it cool off in between takes. Three, two, one, go! I mean, that was the best thing we did. We had the train set at 45 miles an hour. And we were set back about 600 yards with four stuntmen on the back, hanging on. And we'd have to catch up to the train. So this truck doesn't have a speedometer, so we're just guesstimating. So we're probably going excess of 65 miles an hour to catch up to the train, and then I'd, I'd slow down to 45 miles an hour to maintain that speed with it. And we take a car that weighs around 3,000 pounds, and it's jerked off of the train onto the bed of my truck. You can imagine somebody just pushing the rear end of your truck on the gravel, and it felt like it wanted to knock you over. It was a little nerve-wracking. When this truck was launched and, and jumped into the train, it was phenomenal. It was very exciting to see this truck weighing 10,000 pounds being pulled across the desert to hit a jump ramp to go into the side of a train is not something you see every day. OK, guys, train's coming. Roll, oh, camera! And we thought it was going to derail it when, it when it first hit it. And the train got up on its side. I thought, oh my god, it's going over. I mean, we were like millimeters off, you know. If it was just a little bit more push, that train would have overturned and it would have just killed the production. But the couplings from the other boxcars locked in and it brought it back down. It was, it was wild. And then uh, I wanted to, a car to be jumping out of the train at full speed. At one point, I think the studio was thinking that we'd have to basically replace a sequence. It was very costly. When I first read the script, they wanted all these exotic cars, and there was a Mercedes SLR, you know, Lamborghinis, Ferraris. There was cars that were all, you know, in excess of $150,000, $200,000. So when you add that up, it just, you know, blows our whole budget in one shot. So we had to come up with a cheaper alternative. So our final sequence was uh, Corvette. I actually like my childhood favorite cars, so it all, it all worked out well. Once that car comes out of there, 
It's going to come out at about 70 miles an hour. So it's liable to be pretty violent. For the finale of the sequence, we've got to throw this Corvette off of the edge of the canyon. We used basically an air cannon and launched the Corvette into the water down below. We did it in two passes. One where the stunt guys jump into the water from the same platform. Hey, here we go. Here we go. Set, set, three, three, two, two, one. And then we launched the Corvette as a separate pass for safety. And then marry the two in post. Once Vin and Paul come up from the water, that's them. We photographed both of those guys at the actual quarry location for their coverage of their close-ups while they're falling through space, we are using green screen. We've put the Corvette onto a motion base and robotically control its motion to simulate what the falling car does when it's traveling through the air. So whatever they did you know, on the training unit sequence, we need to then insert Van and Paul and their other actors. Three, two, one. Be able to do that. Effects built a gimbal, we had our train mocked up, we had all the same elements, just now it's stationary. We could then control the environment, concentrate on story and the actor moments without having to worry about them in danger. I've had friends come out and visit and they're like, Are you kidding me? This is what you do for a living? I'm like, yeah, would, would you think it'd be any other way? You know, this franchise especially, you get to play every day. And 10 years later, I'm still doing stuff that I hadn't touched before, I hadn't seen before. It's unbelievable.